Well, hello there, ladies and gents. Uh, a quick one here regarding the uh, Eamon Holmes and Dan Wooten interview last night. This is for a special friend of mine from Ireland who asked me to cover this for her. I don't think you're going to be happy, love it, because I'm not 100% in the Eamon camp, although I've always liked him. But the thing is with me, folks, you'll get what I really believe. If I thought giving you some bull would get me an extra 50 subscribers, or giving you the truth would lose me 100, I'd rather lose 100, and I can't afford to lose subscribers. You'll just get the truth. Um, before we go any further, love it, in case you've not seen the earlier video I've just done about a couple of people have said to me, why you keep having to go at Schofield on YouTube? I'll say the same again to anyone that's not seen that one. Yes, folks, I've got it on again, the fleece. If you see the wife today, don't mention it. Please don't mention it. If she sees I've got that fleece on again today, she'll go berserk. And I mean berserk. I'll get no tea and she won't talk to me all night. That part might be all right, but I'll get no tea and I like me tea. She doesn't like this fleece, the wife. But these are last minute things. Yeah, a young lady from Ireland has asked me to cover or give my thoughts on what I thought of the Holmes and Wooten thing last night. Um, I'm happy to do that for anybody. If anyone's got a subject on anything, I've said it in the past, tell it me and then I'll give you a take on it. You might not like it, but it'll be what I see as being the truth. This is all over the place. The bins are on again because I've wrote lots of things down. What I did, I listened to the interview last night, but it was about, I say last night, I'm always up late. It was gone one o'clock this morning, about quarter past 20 past one. I remembered lots of points from in there that I wasn't 100% with. <clears throat> then what I did, I thought, well, because this young lady asked me to give my thoughts, I'll go back on it and I'll write some bullet points from it, but they're a bit all over the place. But before I go any further, let me just say about Eamon. Always liked him, always did. Loved the old Irish brogue. I like his way. I mean, he's a football fan. He's a Man United fan. As am I. What's not to like? Sorry for those that aren't. Um, but I've always liked him. Uh, that said, he said a couple of things on this morning that I've not been happy with over the last five or six years and I've not forgotten. Um, I say I've not forgotten. I got one of them wrong. I know there was an incident with a bus, a Manchester United bus, going into a football ground a few years ago. I had it meant it was Liverpool. Why, I don't know. It was actually West Ham. I've looked online today. And he likened it. I think the, the, the bus got bottled. There was bottles thrown at it. And he likened it to Hillsborough. I've noticed that he did since apologise, but... Where he would have thought someone throwing bottles at a bus was likened to all those people dying at Hillsborough is beyond me, but he did. And also, once on the show there, I'll never forget it, and I can't, I'm sorry. Many of you won't like this person, but I adore this person. He once called Prince. I can't have that. I don't mean Charles, I mean Prince, the main man. I, I couldn't have that at all. When Prince died, he said, well, he said, I can't do the Irish accent. I wasn't really into him really, but men aren't. It's, it's not man's music, is it? And I thought to myself, what on earth are you on about? What on earth? You've got Timberlake, Elton John, and there was loads. The greatest musician ever. We've never seen better. Keith Richards, loads of them. They were, they were coming out of the woodwork. There's never been better. The greatest talent has left our shores. Eddie Clapton, he was done. They keep coming to me, all these people. And I'm thinking, what are you on about? But as I say, I believe he started off as a DJ, Eamon. And I've seen him on there with Ruth in the morning and they've had an act on. And he's clapping away. He's brilliant. I love him. I've got a couple of relations like that. He's got no rhythm at all. He can't clap in time. I'd be, he can't dance in time. I've seen him trying to dance when they're on. And you're thinking, what are you listening to, Eamon? And he doesn't know a lot of the words. There's some, I've seen people like The Real Thing on there in the mornings and stuff. And he's sung the first line to certain songs that we all know really, really well. And he's mouthing them. And they're all the wrong words. And I'm thinking, what do you know about? Anyway, I'm diversing. Let's look at what he did last night with our Dan Wooten, and we'll get to the bottom of this. Look, I've got no problems with Eamon per se. I like Eamon. I do like him. But he said some things last night that I thought, I know he's disliked Schofield. I know he's wanted him out. I know he feels awful about how ITV have treated him, and he thinks there's a chance Schofield might be behind it, and I think there is a chance he's been behind it, and I think he was treated appallingly by ITV. I think he really, really was. Um, so I think he's had it in for them, as was once said in a carry-on film, or that infamy, infamy, they've all got infamy. Anyway, I digress, I often do. But a lot of what he said last night was spot on, and I agree with, but let me just give you some things they won't be in the right order. What did he say? Bear with me a sec. In fact, I've got the wrong bins on, you see. I have bins for this, bins for that, bins for that. This isn't very professional viewers, but this is me, you see. No editing, no nothing here. Bump. See that costume change then? Bump. No problem, right. 
He said, I'm speaking up for all those young people who don't have a voice. Those people have had injunctions against them. Why didn't he speak up before, I asked myself. He said, this lad, he said, he's a lovely lad. A lovely, lovely lad. Me and Ruth always gave him a lot of time. That's very, very nice. We heard the odd rumour about him, um, about his closeness to Schofield, but we never knew they had an affair. Well, that seems strange when lots of people were talking about them having an affair. And Dan Wooten, who's there with him now, was saying, well, he'd heard the rumours and he'd, been, he'd told the producers, which is why he lost his job. Um, he said, the lad always seemed to need a lot of money, which we found very strange. We couldn't understand why. So we used to give him a lot of work outside this morning because he was very good at his job. I don't know why he'd need a lot of money. Maybe living in London, at the high cost of living and whatever else. But Schofield's brought him down there. I wouldn't imagine Schofield was that tight that when he's having an affair with him, he wasn't paying for the, the drinks and the food and everything else. I would imagine it. I see him as going down there and being a kept boy, a kept young adult, I see. So I can't see why he needed a lot of money. But if I thought it was strange, I'd probably ask him why he needed so much money. You see, a Eamon's been told lots of things about this boy and asked no questions, which I find strange. He's mentioned the taxi rides back and forth from Schofields that Freddie Mons, but he did say he's only found out about that since in the last few weeks, so we can skip over that. He says, we've both been very close and we like him a lot, but Ruth has stayed really close to him. She's always been in touch with him. Um, they've been very close all the time he was on this morning and all the way through Loose Women. He said, on Loose Women, he said, everybody felt sorry for him on there. The whole panel, everybody loved him. He was great at his job, but they could see he was really down because he was upset to be moved from this morning to Loose Women. He said, now there's only one person on Loose Women that, that likes Schofield, and she's just a social climber. Again, he didn't mention the name, because they don't, do they? Um, but everybody else felt sympathy, and nobody likes Schofield, because he's not a nice man. Um, now, I would suggest, if this young lad was on Loose Women, working backstage there for two, three years, or whatever he may have been, really down, really depressed, unhappy that he's been moved on, unhappy that he's been moved on with probably by Schofield, Maybe the relationship had ended and whatever else. I cannot believe for the life of me, especially if there's been no injunctions there, as we've been told, I cannot believe that he's not confided in some of them loose women as to why he's upset and what Schofield's done to him. And I would imagine he'd go around the panels like a like wildfire. And I would imagine Ruth would get to hear. And I would imagine she'd tell Eamon and they'd both know about it. I find it strange that they didn't do. He said he was always down and depressed. He said, um, he, said he had some mental health issues and he was often telling us this and crying on our shoulders. Well, again, if a young boy who's, who's impressionable, who I get to like, because Emma said me and we were really liked him, we took care of him, we give him extra work. If he's telling me he's really down, he's really depressed, and I'd be saying, so what's wrong with you? What, what can we do? And Eamon said, oh, we told him we were always there for him. But someone that cares for somebody, I mean, the guy's come from the northwest of England, 190 miles to London, to the Bright Lights. He's only 18, 19, he's of no age, He's really depressed in the big city. Eamon and Ruth live, live, live nearby to, to where they work. They really liked him. They really looked after him. They really thought a lot of him. He was brilliant at his job. They gave him extra work. They've heard rumours, but only rumours. Why on earth would they not put these rumours to the boy and ask him? Why on earth, if the rumours were confirmed, did Eamon not go to the producers like Dan Wooten did and some others did? All right, he might have lost his job by doing that. He lost his job anyway. He's got thousands in the bank, he's worked for a long time. If he cares about this person much as he said, and people in general, that's what I would have done. And people might say, well, you don't know in your position what you do. That's what I would have done. We're talking about two people still out there now that we're, we're told are sex pests. I don't know if it's to chip to boys or to women. And we're being, we're hearing of it all the time and nobody's coming out and naming a name. If I'm in the media now, and I've got a few grand in the bank, I'm going to come out and name that name. Because without doing that, they don't get brought to book. That's why I keep banging on and banging on and banging on about it. I cannot believe the Feynman and Ruth thought that much of this boy. That they, Firstly, they didn't know more. And secondly, if they didn't know more, if they didn't ask more. And then if when they got the answers that we suspect were there, you know, the affair and whatever else, I can't understand why they didn't go to producers and those like and say, this is not on. This young lad's been marginalised, treated awfully. He's been abused by Schofield. Because whatever age the lad was, it's abuse. I mean, when Schofield's what? in his early 50s and the lad's 17, 18, 19 it's abuse right Eamon says he even rang me on my 60th I was away I think he said I was in Ireland at the time and he rang Ruth spoke to Ruth and Ruth put me on and said he's very really down he's very depressed and I spoke to him and I told him I would always be there for him if he needed me again 
he ringed me on my 60th and if I've got the time to speak to him, I want to speak to him. And my wife's passed on and said, he's really down depressed. I'd say, you're down depressed? What's wrong with your son? Well, I don't want to tell him. No, tell me what's wrong with you. I can help you, but I can't help you if you don't tell me what the problems are. Tell me what the problems are and I'll see what I can do to help because I'm, I'm sure I can do something. I want to help you. That's what a friend does. That's what a mentor does. You find out what's wrong and you try to help them. You don't just say, well, he, he spoke to me, he was really down, he was really depressed, but I told him I'm always there for him. Phone gone down, carry on with the party. You find out what's wrong. <sighs> him and he ended the thing with, well, all these have got to be called out. We can't cope with it. We've got to, it's got to be called out, meaning Schofield and what have you. As I said, there was a lady on the TV the other day that kept marking back, I keep harking back to her, I couldn't remember her name. Still don't know her name now. But I, I seen her interview again last night, or no, a different interview. It turns out she's number two in the UKIP party, and I think she's from Clitheroe, which isn't a million miles from where I live. Um, and she's the lady that said, she's pretty certain there's at least one more boy that Scove has been with, at least one more, and she called him boy, and she's pretty certain, she's heard rumours, I'm sure this is what I heard three nights ago, that he has got an injunction against him or a gagging order. Well, somebody needs to say who that boy is. Somebody needs to say what well, that there is a gagging order there. Somebody needs to say that these two people that Kevin O'Sullivan and Vanessa Phelps talked about, they need to say who they are. Somebody needs to say it. Let's get it all out in the open. And it's a cancer. Just get rid of it all. Uh, wait a minute. And that's about it. So, my friend in Ireland, I know you didn't get everything that you wanted there. Don't get me wrong, I think Emma, Emma's heart's in the right place. I think he's a good bloke. I think he's a decent bloke. And I like him. I've got nothing against him. All right, the Hillsborough reference was a bit stupid. The Prince thing was upsetting to me. It probably won't be to you, and it might not be to many others. It's not as upsetting as, as the wife will be if she catches me in this later, I'll tell you. But I've got nothing against him, but I honestly feel he could have done more over the years when, when he was with this lad, especially if they gave him extra work and was working away from this morning, he's had all the time in the world to sit him down to discuss things and say, look, what are your problems? Tell me, I'm your friend. You work with me and Ruth, we both think the world of you. You're away from your mum and dad, miles away from mum. What are your problems? Let's see if we can help you. That to me, lovey, is what he should have done. Um, and especially when you're aiming saying that they heard rumours, not of him, of others, but they never ever knew if anything was true. Well, the fact that I've heard rumours would want me to get to the bottom of it if I cared about the lad. So that's what I think. You know, Eamon comes off great. Comes In that interview with Wooten, he comes off great. But what I would say is, Wooten comes off better. He went to the bosses. He lost his job over it. And from what I can gather, Eamon Holmes and Ruth were closer to the boy than Wooten was. Wooten just felt sorry for him. So Eamon should have done something. I'm sorry, but I put myself in their shoes. I would have done something. I wouldn't have just let it slide. It might have cost me a few quid, but I've got lots of money in the bank if I'm aiming home, so I can cope with that. That's my thoughts. As I say, love it, I told you, you wouldn't necessarily get everything you want, but you've asked me to cover a subject, I'll do it for anybody, but you won't always get what you want, I, pro I promise you that. Although I'll try my best. Thank you.